Try pushing a rubber eraser along the ground and you'll find that it is very hard to do so. Why? Because the ground exerts a frictional force onto the rubber eraser against the direction that you're trying to push it. So friction is a very important force that we always have to consider in our everyday lives, especially in the world of mechanics. And well, what is friction? And we all know that friction is a force that opposes motion. So you're trying to push something across a rough surface that is not smooth. Okay, so the the um, there is a frictional force no matter what, as long as you push it. And so there is always a frictional force, and this force always opposes the motion or intended motion. Intended motion in that sometimes the object is not moving as explained in static friction and you're trying to intent you're trying to give intentional motion you're trying to push something to the right but it's it's stationary because friction is opposing your kind of push I'll explain that later now I'm gonna to try to explain to you what is friction well friction is basically the electrostatic interactions between the atoms of the boxes a box and the atoms of the ground as you know that one of the four types of forces in the known universe, friction is actually an electrostatic force. It's an electrostatic force and it's basically the interactions between the atoms of the box and the atoms of the ground. And that, that region there is basically where they, where they meet, it's the, the interacting surface. So let's look at one type of friction and as I mentioned before, that is static friction. Static friction occurs when there is no motion between the object and the surface. However, there is a frictional force opposing the pushing force. So therefore, this object cannot be set in motion. Try to push this eraser slightly on the ground and you'd realize that it's, you won't be able to move it. That is because the frictional force, there is a static frictional force and this force should be equal to the pushing force as, as indicated in the diagram okay and the other type of frictional force is a kinetic friction that is the f frictional force that acts on an object when it is moving well f kinetic friction is actually not what you are generally thought, ta taught in high school that is how it there is a constant friction, no force, no matter the speed. However, that is not true in real life. Kinetic friction uh, increases as you increase your speed along a surface. That is true. Try pushing your finger across your table slowly and quickly. You will realize that the table exerts a much greater force on your finger when you move through, it, uh, through the table faster. So therefore, friction, kinetic friction, is not a constant force. It is, it rather, is rather, a a variable force. So that that is what you should remember. But in your syllabus for SAT, IGCSE, and A level, you are generally taught to think that kinetic friction is constant. Okay. Well, well, let's look at what friction actually is. Okay. So you are pushing this this object onto the ground and so, so is its weight the the weight of the object pushing onto the ground so there is basically a force in which the ground exerts overall force in which the ground exerts onto the box and that is the contact force remember it's not non it's not the normal contact force it's the total force so it's the contact force okay and it usually it when there is friction it will act in an angle when there is no friction, it will act normally to the surface. Okay, so in this case, you are applying a force and the ground it provides a frictional force onto your object. So the contact force is at an angle. And what friction basically is, therefore, is the, it is the horizontal component of the contact force. It is a horizontal component of that contact force in which the ground overall ex exerts onto the box. Okay, now let's look all about what friction depends on. Well, friction depends on two things. It depends on the nature of the surfaces 
uh, that can be predicted using the coefficient of friction between the surfaces. So it, uh, the frictional force would be generally larger if you are considering surf two rough surfaces rather than two smooth surfaces as you're able, it is going to be harder to push through two push um, an object that is rough through another rough surface okay and it depends on the normal reaction force it depends on the force the normal reaction force and the normal reaction force is equal to the overall force of the object acting on the ground that is uh, that is told by Newton's third law so remember as indicated in the diagram the normal reaction force in this case is equal to the object's weight but often in in harder questions the normal contact force is not the is not the weight at all it may be aided with another force acting upwards and therefore the normal contact force would be less okay so it's remember it's the normal contact force not the weight the strength of the normal contact force okay beautiful but let's look at another a, a deeper concept into friction that is let's look at static friction so when a force is pushed but still stationary or it has static friction the pushing force is equal to the frictional force but there is a limit to which uh, this frictional force can be so look at the eraser I'm trying to push across the ground if you push it with a certain a, a great amount a certain amount of force it will start moving and if you uh, exert a force that is less than that amount of force it will not move it, it there will be static friction holding it back so the limit in which the friction can hold the object back that is the force required to set it in motion is equal uh, is equal to the, the maximum frictional force which is calculated as the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal contact force okay and this force and, and sorry this equation can be simply written as f max is equal to mu r or f equals mu r and in some situations r as I have told you is equal to the weight of the object so you can look at it as f max equals mu r m g or whatever whatever you'd like so let's look at this quick example where the normal contact force is actually the weight it makes everything easier okay so an object of mass a box of mass two kilograms is stationary on the ground the coefficient of friction between the box and the ground is 0.5 find the minimum pushing force required to set the box in motion so in other words you're trying to find the, the maximum frictional force okay the maximum frictional force in which the object uh, the ground can exert onto the object before it starts moving so it's the minimum pushing force required to set the box in motion okay so as we have so as we do remember the maximum frictional force is equal to mu r the the coefficient of friction multiplied by the reaction force so the reaction force in this case is equal to the weight of the object there is no other up or down force acting on the object apart from its well its weight and the and the reaction force which is equal to the weight so the reaction force is equal to the weight which is 2 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration of free fall so it gives 2 g not 2 grams okay and this force is therefore equal to 0 0.5 which is the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal contact force and that gives you the maximum frictional force of G or 9.8 newtons okay